In this video, we're going to cover the benefits of Citrix workspace delivery with a network that is powered by Citrix SD-WAN. We will make use of the latest SD-WAN demo environment in Citrix Demo Center to do this. Before we get into that, at a quick glance, Citrix SD-WAN Standard Edition and Premium Edition provides some unique benefits to workspace delivery. The first benefit being bandwidth. Using Citrix SD-WAN, you can achieve true bandwidth aggregation. The virtual tunnel between peers uses the lump sum of bandwidth to provide a larger secure pipe across the wide area network. And since the SD-WAN overlay comprises of many various underlay transports, the WAN becomes highly reliable. As the SD-WAN solution continues delivery of any traffic regardless of the individual data path state. End user experience is undisturbed with no indication of network disruption as network paths go up and down since SD-WAN is auto-administrating the network. There is also benefits in visibility with SD-WAN in the network. SD-WAN central management tool has visibility into all sites deployed with SD-WAN and provides a quality of experience index score specifically designed to give admins a quick view into the network health as it relates to the HDX quality. There are other reporting mechanisms such as flow count, mean opinion score, and application bandwidth that are very useful to gauge the health of applications, as well as the SD-WAN deployment. Lastly, the Citrix SD-WAN provides deep visibility into the HDX protocol, being able to decipher the different channels that make up a single ICA stream. That gives unique ability to be able to deliver sessions on a per channel basis and to selectively change the transport mode as well as the priority of the application to give more control to the admins on helping improve the quality of experience of HDX protocol specifically. And these are unique differentiating factors against any SD-WAN solution that's in the marketplace today. So let's look at the demonstration that showcases these unique key values of our Citrix SD-WAN solution. So again, we're leveraging the latest demo center environment that's available in demo center for the Citrix SD-WAN solution. And in this case, we're using MR5.2. In that environment, you get access to various components. Your unified gateway will provide you access directly into the storefront where the published applications reside. So if we go to the desktop tab, we can identify the branch desktop and as well as the data center desktop. For this demonstration specifically, we're going to leverage the branch desktop. And let me quickly show you the topology so that you could understand why. So as a user on my laptop, I'm accessing the environment through the public IP that's available and launching the published desktop that forces my communication with this published desktop to go through the SD-WAN solution. And that SD-WAN solution comprises of a branch office VPX, a data center VPX, and between that, I'm using a WAN emulator to control the underlay transports, which comprises of a 0 0.5 megabit per second MPLS link and a two megabit per second internet link. We're gonna ignore the standby LTE link in this demonstration, we're going to ignore that and focus on the aggregation and resiliency as we impact the MPLS and internet links. So we'll go ahead and launch the branch desktop here. And as that launches, I will also open up the user interface to our SD-WAN center, which provides you that management tool for the central analytics of the network and the network health. I will log in directly to the user interface of our DC virtual appliance so that I can measure the WAN health as well as see the application flow. And for this demonstration, I will also be using the WAN emulator to control the MPLS and internet health between the SD-WAN peers. And it, for the WAN emulator, you may have to zoom in or zoom out to see the respective tabs that are available. If you're zoomed too far in, you may not see the, the tabs. And we're gonna use the advanced mode tabs to impact the MPLS and internet link specifically.
So with our published desktop launched, there on the desktop there is a HDX monitor tool, which can be used to give us a health measurement of this published desktop. Specifically, we're going to focus on the network. That gives us an available bandwidth reading that the HDX monitor tool reads. And that available bandwidth essentially is between my endpoint receiver and the published desktop it's continuously measuring the available bandwidth between sites. So I can use this as a gauge as I impact the wide area network using the WAN emulator as to what the actual reading is from the perspective of that tool. So with the published application launched, I can go to my reporting on the SD-WAN user interface. I can first look at the respective WAN link usage for each respective path. And we could ignore the second site here, so I'll filter for just branch office one, which will show me the individual WAN paths, as well as display them in a unidirectional characteristic state for best one-way jitter loss. And specifically, I want to look at kilobits per second, so it helped me identify which WAN links are being used in the application delivery. So right now, it's a clean environment, not much traffic is running through, and I can enable auto refresh to uh, get an indication of the updated path usage. And ICA is sitting idle right now, so not much traffic. So let's go ahead and induce some traffic by opening up a video, and that will create some, some generate some traffic for us. So if I go back to the monitoring tool of the paths, I can see that uh, the internet link is being used and the MPLS link is being used for delivery. And again, the LTE link is in a standby state, so just heartbeat is going across there. So I can see high usage of the links. And again, this is a, the MPLS is a 500 megabit per second link. The internet's a 2 megabit per second link. So we see some usage across those links. In addition, I can go into the flows and filter for my ICA traffic. And that's operating across port 2598. And I can see that we have multi-stream ICA enabled. So I'm able to deliver uh, each of the respective tags of ICA differently across the wide area network and across the SD-WAN solution. So we'll get back to this. First, I want to showcase some of the key functionality of SD-WAN. So going back to the statistics page, again, we want to enable auto refresh and specific to site one. And I want to showcase first the resiliency. If I go into the WAN emulator, I can bring down any one of the respective paths, but I'm going to take down the internet link. So Ethernet 3 is associated with internet. I'll add 100% loss. From the SD-WAN perspective, it will see that the internet link just went down, which forces the system to only deliver traffic across the last remaining leg. Again, LTE is the standby state, so the remaining leg in this case is just MPLS, so the traffic will only be delivered across the MPLS link. From the VDI perspective, the end user encounters no disruption in the published desktop. The traffic is seamlessly delivered with the SD-WAN monitoring the health of the network. The only impact to the published desktop is lower bandwidth. So as the receiver starts detecting that there's less bandwidth available between the branch office and data center, it will only deliver at the rate that it's capable of delivering. Okay, so this is what most single link environments run into, congestion of that particular WAN link and the impact it has on the applications that go across that link because of congestion. So you can see as I'm moving the mouse cursor uh, in the environment and I'm trying to interact with that application, there is significant lag and delay because of insufficient bandwidth. And with Citrix SD-WAN, we can easily address that by adding bandwidth. So I will remove the loss. And again, this WAN emulator, you may have to refresh it in order to make sure that the user interface is not timed out. But as I remove the loss, SD-WAN will detect the change in the network, assess the new link that was added, and then once the, it's, the link is assessed to be healthy, it will start making use of that link for application delivery. So it will aggregate the bandwidth and deliver across multiple links simultaneously. 
from the perspective of the published desktop, the monitor tool sees that there's more bandwidth, so the session will start delivering more bandwidth. And from the perspective of the VDI published desktop, the interaction between the published desktop and the end user increases because there's more bandwidth to play with and there's no, uh, there's no lag or issues detected with the published application. So that showcases the ability for the SD-WAN solution to provide aggregated and resilient network for any application delivery, specifically the HDX protocol in this demonstration. Next, we'll, we'll highlight some of the administration and visibility pieces of our SD-WAN sensor tool. So when, with SD-WAN sensor, it gives you in the dashboard visibility into the SD-WAN health of the network. We can look at network quality of experience, top site inventory. Specifically, I want to focus on HDX quality of experience. So this is a this is a unique functionality of our solution to be able to take the WAN path measurements that we're monitoring on a per SD-WAN path basis, use that calculation to identify if the network is healthy enough for delivery of our HDX session. So it will identify that measurement to quickly assess the network and give you the bottom five sites as it pertains to the user experience measurement. As links go down, as there's insufficient bandwidth for HDX delivery, your quality of experience measurements will go down. And it, you can assess the network to see which of your deployed sites are in a good state, a fair state, a poor state, as it relates to HDX delivery. So this is a very simple lab, uh, one branch office, one data center, uh, but you can imagine when you have multiple sites, this is very key, useful information to quickly converge on segments of the network that needs to be uh, assessed for proper delivery of any protocol in addition to HDX. Also, you can see the sing single uh, session uh, and the session count for single stream ICA versus multi-stream ICA. So in our environment, and the setup is delivered um, in multi-stream mode by default because of the configuration that's in place to, to force that behavior. And again, we can assess uh, multi-stream delivery if we look at the respective flows, and I'm filtering for 2598 for our ICA traffic, and we can see the different flows of real-time, interactive, uh, and specifically the individual tags that are in place uh, that are detected with multi-stream being enabled, SD-WAN can then dif differentiate that as a, as a separate flow and treat those individual packets separately. So when we look at the priority tags of ICA, when multi-stream is enabled, we can make use of those tags to provide quality of service in the network. Tag zero is associated with high prior channels like audio. Tag one is associated with high priority, like thin wire, and that's essentially the screen refreshes, mouse cursor movement. Tag two is medium. You can associate that with channels that are related to multimedia. Uh, it's related to copying of uh, files, clipboard, USB redirection. Tag three is associated with lower priority channels, such as print. So with that information, SD-WAN can be in the path to auto-detect the, the, that the solution can handle MSI. It can then treat the individual channels that are tagged and the packets separately for delivery across the SD-WAN solution. So that concludes the demonstration. What I wanna do now is quickly go over the configuration that was done to achieve that. So if I go into the SD-WAN center, network configuration, I can open the configuration that is specific to this demo environment. And with that, I will go to the global tab. And one of the first customization of this environment that was done was creating a default set to provide us a global configuration of the network. And I will use the default classes. So here's where, by default, the classes are defined to identify tag zero to tag three and to treat them respectively different, different for in terms of quality of service. So auto QoS is one of the key features of the solution. 
The second key feature of the solution is using our deep packet inspection, we can enable multi-stream ICA, which allows us to be in the path and trigger workspace to deliver in multi-stream mode. Now, the unique part here is that we keep that workspace in, in, in a single port configuration. So there's, there's no configuration requirement needed on the servers. It's auto detection mechanism here at this point. So this is off by default, but we can go in and, in the configuration and enable it. And by enabling that, that auto triggers multi-stream ICA. When you do that, you have the ability to create some customization. So if I go back to the default set, I can go to application costs and I can create custom application class rules. Specifically here, I've created a new custom application class rule to, to filter for tag zero and deliver that specifically in a different transmit mode and uh, associate that with a class. And you can do that by clicking the add. You can select application, search for ICA, and you can really filter for any of the tags that are identified by the deep packet inspection. So I selected tag zero to treat the real-time traffic differently. I created a custom rule group so that I can create reporting specific to tag zero. I selected transmit mode for duplicate path so that I can customize the behavior. I associated with the, one of the default classes that was that comes out of the box, tag zero. I enabled packet resequencing since packet duplication was enabled as a transmit mode. And I added that, that custom application. And then for the rule groups, what I did was I added a new rule group, ICA tag zero. I enabled uh, MOS scoring for that so that I can see the reporting. So with that configuration in the path, it enables multi-stream ICA, it enables reporting on tag zero specifically, and it gives me as an administrator ability to customize how a specific channel of ICA is being delivered. So from the perspective of the SD-WAN solution, it's going to treat tag zero differently. It's gonna treat it uh, for different transmit mode, in this case, duplicated transmit mode, and it's searching for that tag zero specifically, and it's associating with the class, uh, the class of service that I want to associate it with. In addition, if I go to my SD-WAN center, I get the ability to, to specifically report on those applications. So if I look at my applications, I get visibility into the apps that I'm enabling for reporting. I get the usage of bandwidth. I also get a tab that identifies the detail of quality of experience on the HDX traffic, the number of flows. With that customization of the rule group, ICA tag zero, I can also, also enable the MOS score on that for tag zero. So you can do that with any application for this demonstration or for this demo, we've enabled that so that you can see that configuration ability. Thank you for watching this video.